All right, my lovers, how you doing? As you can see, we're on the beautiful Thames foreshore. Just look how beautiful it is out here tonight. I'm with good old cuffs. Evening. <laughs> uh, we got mudlarking, which means looking for anything old and interesting on the foreshore of the River Thames when the tide goes out. So, you looking forward to uh, mudlarking? What are you going to find today? Yeah, I'm thinking the coin. I'm yeah. Thinking, I don't know, feeling like late 17th century or so. <laughs> I don't know why, it's very that's specific. That's optimistic. Well, I'm looking for anything as usual. The bigger the better for me tonight. I'm looking for something big. Who knows what we're going to buy. So let's get some luck in the muck. Oh, please. We've got it. Which is what do you got? This is 14th century. I'm Ooh, sure I've seen it. Yeah. Alright, 100 year old ginger beer. Oh, did you hear the fizz? Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got a bottle down here. Don't know if it's complete. Are you want to wait to find out? Let's dig her out. And there it is. I'm going to guess Beatty. Beatty, yeah, that's a good shout. Hopefully, oh, definitely some. Definitely looks like it's half there. I think it'll come out nice and easy for me. Probably not. Just get under that um, bit of concrete there, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, if you move that yellow brick, there we go. Inside. <clears throat> Bit of air underneath that. We're talking Victorian by looks of things. Hopefully, it's got something on it. Yeah, I can feel it goes. Hey, it goes away down there. Oh, exciting! Yeah, she's wiggling. She's wiggling a bit. I break it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I think I'll just try and go around the outside to kind of just get some air underneath it. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Bit of a sideways wiggle. <laughs> Whoa. Hey. Nice, look at that. Oh, it's got some writing on the bottom. There we go. And at the top. top. Yeah, big old R whites. R whites? Nice. Hey, that's got some nice iridescence on that. Yeah. So, 1890s, 1900s? Yeah. Yeah. Camberwell. Uh, yeah, Camberwell. Oh, that's good. Quite oh, amazing seeing that. It's a big one, actually. Yeah, it's quite big. Oh, nice. Yeah. Happy with that. First find of the day. <laughs> Get home, clean that up, and take some better pictures, I reckon. Nice job. Well, oh, guys, can you see that? That is a garnet because it's just a little bit too pink for a garnet. Could be a little paste stone or it could be something even better. That's very pretty. Because look, it's all faceted. Yeah, awesome. I reckon that could be a precious stone. Never know. Could be a little ruby. Oh, that's very pink. Uh, so what do you reckon, guys? Anybody know what pink stones tend to be? If you know, comment below because I'm not sure what that could be. I'm guessing it could probably just be a paste, Georgian paste stone. But you live in hope, could be a good one. Well, there's a little find just there. It's unusual. What that is? That's really pretty. A piece of a uh, piece of glass. Looks like it might be a paperweight or something. I don't know. Very pretty. Maybe it's a maybe it's a doorknob. But why would you have that on the inside? You wouldn't see it. I'm not sure what that is though. Pretty cool, I'm taking it. Oh the old uh, Thames phones. Absolutely smashed to buggery. iPhone. Put a, take that anyway, put in the rubbish. All the batteries are swelled up and stuff, so yeah, we'll take that for a bin. Do a good deed. Oh, Carter just spotted something eating in his gold. What's new in that, the mud? Probably just a door handle or something. 
Yeah, something like that, isn't it? Encrusted, can't get that out. Oh well. Give it a clean though, see if it is anything. Yeah. Probably not, probably end up in the scrap bin, but. <laughs> yeah, give it a shout if it's anything good. Get right. it out of the filming sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> is it complete? Oh, you know what? Well, hello. Nice. Oh, that's a good one. That Ooh, is that a nice is little beer bottle, I think. Still deposit, some in. Deposit charged, yeah, on this bottle. And from the other side, the same there. This bottle. Is the property. Of. Our white. Yay. Oh, could have just looked at the stopper for that I <laughs> suppose. But uh, there's still some liquid in it. I'll let you do the honours and get rid of it if you want. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's traditional we drink some in it. Well, maybe not that one. <laughs> All right, 100 year old. Ginger beer? Oh, did you hear the fizz? Oh. Oh, yeah. Stinks? Yeah, it smells rotten. Oh. I'm not going to drink that. Yeah, pour that straight out. Say that. It doesn't very ginger beer y. No. It ain't too bad, to be fair. It's a little bit eggy, but apart from that. I nice, complete bottle. I still wouldn't drink it. Unless that was. Would that be mineral water? Looks like a bottle uh, of ginger it could beer. Could be. Oh, yeah. lemonade, I would have thought, being yeah. all white, but. Who knows, brown bottle is unusual. Nice. Well, just dug this up with the old detector and uh, it was quite interesting. I hope it might be a dagger shape, but oh, that'd be amazing if it was. The trouble is, the tide's gone so far out, I haven't really got much water, so I'll use what I can around here. Oh, that is interesting though. Oh, it could just be a bit of rubbish. Very, very flimsy. But then look, look at those marks there. It would have been sewn into something. Perhaps it is a dagger shape. Might be a sword shape. That's wishful thinking, but you never know. Yeah, definitely used for something, look, because it's got those little holes, like I said. Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to look in further into this one. And uh, maybe I'll ask Cuff, see what he thinks. Cool. Basically, this would have been on the end of your sword sheath to stop it going through the bottom protecting the bottom of the uh, sheath where you had your sword so yeah that would be awesome if it's true although it's not exactly perfectly shaped but if it's been there a couple of hundred three four hundred years then obviously it's going to be a bit misshapen yeah, i'm quite excited about that right well cuffs is here so he can give us a second opinion on what uh this little brass object is what do you reckon on this mate Hmm. I think it's a scabbard, isn't it? That's what I'm thinking, dagger shape, hmm. sword shape. Sword shape, I think, yeah. You reckon? Right, yeah. It looks like it, I like the holes there, and I like the end as well. I think you're right, yeah. The shape. It's pretty nice. cool. Yeah. Nice, mate. Yeah, happy with that. Well, that's one, uh, that's two opinions on the dagger shape, so, or sword shape, depends on the size of the uh, sword. Yeah, happy with that. Got some decent age to that. It's right in the black stuff as well. Oh, nice. I just dug that up. Little Georgian knife blade bent. And took some punishment in his life. And all the stories that could tell us. Definitely a blade that's thin on that side. Thick on the top. Well, Cuffs has got something. Oh, it's out. I just pulled my camera out and you shouted. Yeah, it's pulled up this point, right to the mud. And you can see in the centre, cob, cob a plug. Oh, tinny. Tin farthing. Oh, nice. tin, tin hapley, I mean, not tin farthing. Oh, wow. If you go to the end there, there's a little stream of water. Right. Let's hope it's in good nick because sometimes they come out all different conditions, didn't they? Feel was battered. 
Oh, it's absolutely battered. Oh. Right, it's a tin eighty. Charles, Mary. Yeah, Mary, probably, or James. James. Well done, mate. Well, that's still pretty good. I reckon, knowing your skills of uh, cleaning, you probably get something off of it. Yeah. But yeah, you see there in the middle there, it's a copper plug. That stops counterfeits, because tin was obviously really easily uh, obtainable, so they they made these cheap coinage that don't last very well. Because they last, they last better in the river than they do in the field. That's still going to be 250 year old coin. Maybe 300 if you're lucky. Well done, mate. Well, that's not bad. <laughs> yeah, I wish there was something on it, but it's eh, alright. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> Those uh, masts of the uh, ships out. Pretty cool. Well, guys, you never guess what? I saw a chain on the foreshore and I thought, give it a pull because now and again there's something on the end, usually a padlock if you're really lucky. But I pulled it and pulled it and it came, off quite, came away so easily. You ought to come and look at this. I pulled up another anchor. Check it out. Oh, hello. Look, look what I found. I thought you was calling me a wank. Oh, look. Yeah. So there's a chain right here, and I thought I'll give that a pull because you never know. Something's there. Look, that's where it's that where it's probably in a stone or something. Anyway, pull it over here. Yeah, beautiful big anchor. Literally fresh out of the mud. Look at that, isn't that beaut? I wonder if it's got another name on it like before. Another J Jones maybe. God, you never know. Right there, look. What on the end? Yeah. Do you know what? I thought there was something there, but. I've just rubbed it in. Oh, I made it worse. <laughs> I know, that's what I've just done. Still. Uh, <laughs> All the trouble is, it still touched that bloody chain. Well, as far as the chain go. <laughs> goes into a, goes into like a stone there. Oh, I'll give it a tug. There, isn't it? No. God, it's the longest chain ever. Oh, that was mate. Oh, hang on, there's the end. Oh, you got the end. Nice. That's just putting a big knot there. It's probably tied around a, probably tied around a log or something. You can untie that. Do you know, I lost my other glove as well. Oh. Do you know, if I'm, imagine if it's tied to a padlock as well. <laughs> Imagine if there's a padlock in here as well. <laughs> or a boat. So there's another goes under there. Cool, I'm un untying a chain. There we go. Yeah, it goes down there, doesn't it? But... So that might come free. Is it, what's that thing there? Is it on that? That's the that's the fold there, I think. Oh is it? It's actually that I think. Yeah, something there though, which is grimed on. Anyway, I need both hands to do this. Anyway, you've seen the anchor. We're gonna try now and get it up and uh yeah, put that in the old anchor collection. I can't leave that yet, that's too good. Sweet. Bye. Stick around for the cleanup where I reveal the engraved name on it. Well, look, tiny fine time, and it is there. Look at that tiny little glass bead. Could be early as Roman. Nice. So tiny, I'm surprised I spotted it. Teeny tiny finds. 
Nice piece of printer's type with a wobble U. It's definitely a W and a H there. Well, we'll just give it a quick wash. Well, that's not great light in here, but we reckon there is maybe a W, a H, and maybe an I. You can see it's just I reckon it's says, I reckon it says white. I reckon oh. that's the guy's Oh, yeah, it? you can see it. I can definitely see a H here. Oh, yeah, look, W there. H, I, maybe. Well, we'll definitely be able to clean that up. He hasn't, it's not as deep as my other anchor. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah. That's, 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 uh, uh, I don't know what it is. It's just like a lump of, like... Turn it off? Or? You can do, but I struggled, mate, to get it off. Oh, look at you. Easy. That's pretty sh** that, isn't it? I think it might just be a piece of, like, tar or something, or rope. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's to keep it... I don't know. Do you want it? <laughs> well, if you... It, I don't think it's new. I think it's just got caught. It's right on that Let me just see there. if there's any metal in it. You've got no rings on or anything, have you? No. no, there's nothing. There's not padlock, padlock in there or anything cool, so... Yeah, we can be sure that's just a piece of tar or rope or something. Want it? Stuck in it, no thank you. How <laughs> many lovely copper nails there are? Loads of them, lovely jubbly. Whoa, oh, me and Mike have both had a coin each. I think mine's a tote, lead tote. So my one appears to be a little Georgian. Yeah, 1806, there or thereabouts. Brilliant. Oh, wow. George the third. Oh, just heard. Oh wow. You're just gonna blow my coin out of the water now, aren't you, Mike? But that's a nice little Georgian. Yeah, George the third Soho half penny. I am pretty certain. What you got? What you got? This is 14th century. Plan is it Plantagenet? Really? Like, I'm sure it is because it's got the eagle on it and the shield on the other side. I'm Ooh, sure I've seen the eagle yeah. like For where we are, it's really unusual. I don't know what that is, but I like it. I'm almost certain that's a medieval type. <laughs> you, mean, you mean coin? To or token? Yeah. A token? Yeah. A silver token? No, no, a pewter one. Oh, right. I've never seen that before. Awesome. I can double check and confirm, but I yeah, think no, that's it's an, an awesome little coin. Well done, mate. I can't work out. It looks like a pineapple or something on there. I think it's an eagle. It looks like an eagle. Oh too. yeah, no, it is. It is. I can see it now. Yeah, two wings either side. Oh, nice. Do you, what's, tell me more about the plantation. Plantagenet, I think. It's Sorry, called. plantagenet ones. Yeah, oh, I think they're 14th century. From what so I what remember. were they? What have they been used for? Like it's all change, like anything else. All so what, like, British or yeah, British. British might be like a church token or something like that. Fantastic. I'll have to look into it. Oh, what a mate! There you go. Because I've never found one. Yeah. Oh, so first for cuffs. There yeah. we go. So that's that's always a good sign when cuffs is finding out the new ones. Hopefully, I'll bite on it. Yeah. It's not just a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. This amazing token dates to a series of known tokens that were made between 1250 and 1307, otherwise known as Plantagenet tokens, meaning it was issued during the reigning monarchs that belonged to the Plantagenet dynasty, a family with French origins that took control with Henry II in 1154 and finally ended when Richard III died at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485. These tokens were used as currency due to the lack of short change and it depicts a double-headed eagle on one side and a classic medieval shield with horizontal lines known as a Barry shield. I knew a Barry shield at school. He got his head stuck in a vice. Nice bloke though. <laughs> well Cuffs has just come up and give me this. Nice little pen knife with a pearl, mother of pearl handle. Isn't that nice? He says he can't be bothered to clean it so... Uh... Fair play. I'll give it a zap and see if it unfolds, if it's a folding one. I'll give that a go, I don't mind the challenge, or unless it's uh, unless it's gone, it might have broken off. Still, we'll give it a quick zap and see what see what comes of it, eh? Nice handle anyway, actually. Oh, where's my head torch going? Must mean it's time to go, because that means we've been out here for like, quite a while. Well, my lovers, look, you can see we're chained to the wall because the tide's coming in. So we need to call it a day. But thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. See us again on another mud venture. See you on the next one. <laughs> I believe this wonderful artifact to be a sword shape, probably from a sabre style of sword. 
It was a popular style of curved sword favoured by the French. The holes indicate that it was sewn onto a leather scabbard and probably dates to the 1600s to 1800s. For a positive ID, I'll be recording it with the Museum of London in due course. Anyone searching for historic artefacts are encouraged to show any discoveries to a fines liaison officer. It's then photographed and recorded on the portable antiquities scheme finds database and then duly returned. Here's that lovely bottle all cleaned up. I decided to add a label on it, but not for the usual lemonade or mineral water, but for its other known drink, Kaola. This drink was made using the cola nut, which was an early version of the cola drink we know and love today. This bottle was made in Camberwell in South London. Fun fact, when this part of South London was heavily bombed during the Second World War, there are accounts of R. White's lemonade being used to put out incendiary bonfires, when water wasn't so easy to get hold of. Well, my lovers, what an epic night that was. I've got the anchor out now, I've laid it all out, and the chain is 16 foot long, and I reckon there's a name there. So let's clean it up and see what we can find and if we can do any research on that name and find out who the guy was. So go clean it up. Lily, what have you got in your mouth? <laughs> Good. So here's the anchor, and Nelly's come out to help me, um, getting in the way of the sun. Anyway, look, you can see there, definite W H I or T. Don't know. Need to. Looks like it definitely says white, and that's a really sorry, Nick. Common name um, to research. So we may not find anything under that name, but we'll give it a quick clean up just to make that a little bit clearer. And, uh, and have a look. Yeah, definitely make out the letters W H I T E. That's awesome. Shame there's no first initial. But maybe there was a family of ferrymen or who knows, sailors or barge workers under the name of White. We'll definitely look into that. But um, it looks really cool now because I've actually filled in uh, the engraving with some white watercolour. So it's completely removable, you can wash it out, but I thought it'd be a good idea just to see how clear we can get it. So yeah, looking fantastic. As predicted, there are many Mr Whites who were bargemen and lightermen over the years. And I have searched the old newspapers to see what I could find. And there are so many unfortunate stories involving Mr White, it's hard to pick one. There are stories about various barge and lightermen called Mr White, pulling bodies from the Thames. And even worse, in 1909, an angler pulled a baby and a woman up, which turned out to be a Mr White's wife and child who had been missing since Christmas Eve. So, so sad. The least depressing story was the 1894 Great Silver Robberies. Was our Mr White a bit of a tea leaf? Cockney rhyming slang for thief. The article reads, at the Central Criminal Court today, Walter Tag, 26, labourer, Henry Brown, 18, labourer, and George William White, lighterman, who were convicted of stealing and receiving a quantity of silver, value £1,200, were brought up for sentence. £600 worth of property is still missing. White was sentenced to five years penal servitude, which means imprisonment and hard labour. Tag to 10 months and Brown to nine months imprisonment. Obviously, Mr. White was the ringleader here. But what happened to the missing booty? Was it thrown in the Thames? I'll keep my eye out. But what an amazing piece of social history. Our imaginations can run wild with the stories that this anchor could tell. Who was Mr. White and what was he all about? We'll never know for sure. Thanks for watching, Mud Lovers, and I'll see you on the next Mud Venture.